Hello, everybody. George Kenner. Very good to see you today. What are we going to review? The Ortur Laser Master 3, the latest in the Ortur lineup. And it's a very, very sleek looking machine. It has many of the features that all of the top diode lasers have, including air assist that goes straight down from the air compressor straight into the top of the head. Now this is a 10 watt system and it's a very small condensed head. I really like it, a lot of power in this. The, with just the turn of a simple screw right here, you can, you can see that there's also an automatic measurement device that goes in there so that you're on, on focus every time you use it, very easily adjusted. I wanted to show you how quickly that can be done. There is a key system on this to turn it on and off. So if you didn't want anybody using your laser, you could take this away. There is an emergency stop on the system and it comes with safety glasses. Of course, we want everybody to be as safe as possible. These are not toys. This is a tool. It can be very dangerous and it can start a fire. Ortura did a really nice job with this. It even has Wi-Fi connection, so you don't have to be hooked up with a cable to your computer, although it did come with one. This is the power supply, and I wanted to lay it out all on this little table to show you the amount of space that you would need to, to have to use something like this. Now, this power supply, a lot of them come with inline air adjustment systems, a little valve, a gate valve. This one actually comes with a rheostat so you can turn the amount of pressure that it'll put out from minimum to maximum. No reason for an inline or a gate valve system. It came with a couple of extra cables. I'm sure these are for the rotary system. They sent me a rotary system or tour sent me everything with this. And I took about a half an hour to try and put this together without the instructions. I did that on purpose because I wanted to see how intuitive it was to, to, to assemble it. Could somebody pull it out and get very frustrated? Well, I got to the point where it was a little hard. I went and watched the three minute video on how to assemble this. It solved the problem. Don't be like me and try and figure it out yourself. Go watch the video. I'll put a link to it down in the comments. So in this one, I didn't want to do a bunch of testing that never means anything to anybody. So what I did was I went over and got some hardwood. Now this is how I would probably really use the system is to put a logo in some of the woodwork that I make. Well, these were two that I did just testing the, the strength and the, the amount of depth of cut that I could get. And I was really very impressed. There was very little side smoke or charring to this. I haven't changed these at all. Then I wanted to get a little more complex. I turned it over on this side. Let's go over here and see if I can get this into this camera. Now, this is a very fine elephant and it is depressed into the wood. This isn't just like a little stain, this is cut in. I did this with two runs of the laser to get additional depth. Now, what I was checking for was to see if there was any chatter in the laser head and if it would move off or if I'd be able to maintain the fine detail. It perfectly did this. You couldn't tell the difference between it doing one and two. Um, one and two passes on the machine. Very, very solid, good choice for anybody that wants to get started, in my opinion. Now this was a, a chatter, chatteré, chat, some people call it a charcuterie board because they can't say, no, oh, I'm not even gonna try. So um, in this one, I, I took and I wanted to engrave a, a saying in it and I took three runs. This is deep into this board. It came out really very, very nice. Everybody wants to see it work. They want to actually see what it'll do. So what I did was I took a wine glass. I put it back in this roller, right like that. I put somebody's birth date on it, a woman named Grace, October 1st, 2022. Now that wasn't her birth, that's her birthday, but not the year she was born. And 
it came out perfect. It's perfectly aligned. Everything is on balance. If you were to do this to, you know, commercially, I'm sure this would take a $1.50 wine glass and turn it into a $15 gift. So is there a commercial application for something like this? Absolutely. I started a YouTube, or excuse me, I started a Facebook group. Somebody encouraged me to do that because so many people were writing to me and asking for small little hints. And what I did was I said, okay, I have a problem with some of the groups that are out there. I wanted one that is very free and open, not controlled by any manufacturer. So I called it Laser Freedom. <laughs> and you can come in and join if you have any questions on any of the lasers. I think I'm up to about five diode lasers, no, six diode lasers that I've already reviewed. And I have two more that are sitting here in the garage that need to be reviewed. And I'm supposed to have a K40 on the way that also needs to be reviewed. Now, why would you want to really buy a diode laser instead of something like a CO2? Well, I'm considering buying a CO2. I've done a series of videos and I'll link to that at the very end of this. But one of the things about this is it runs perfectly on light burn. If you were to buy something like this, even one that wasn't even quite as expensive, you could learn light burn while you're sitting and waiting for your CO2 shipment to come in. These things will arrive and you can get them off of Amazon in a matter of three days. It's not that big a thing. And the real challenge to this is the software. And this runs perfectly on Lightburn. So if you're thinking about going CO2, because the software is the important part, you may want to get, you know, one of the least expensive diode lasers and get started. And like I said, you saw the wine glass, it would still have a commercial application. You could probably even still use it. So one last thing that I did was one of my friends asked me to set up a Amazon influencer store. And the reason for it was when I do some of my woodworking, people want to know where you got the best two-sided tape for your CNC. They want to know if there's any alternates for sandpaper. They want to see what you use in your shop. So I was able to set up an influencer store because of the number of subscribers that I have. And I was able to put all that in there. If you'd like to go see any of the equipment that I use, by all means, it's sitting right there. If you have any questions, please let me know. One of the other things I'm considering right now is called a saw stop table saw. And what it'll do is if you touch the blade, even when it's spinning with anything other than wood, it'll immediately break, meaning it won't cut your finger off. If anybody's had any experience with any of those, please leave the comments below, but I'm really considering buying one of those for the shop. I've been making a lot of cutting boards, getting ready for Christmas, and I've got a couple more projects that I'm going to start doing with the CNC that are a lot more complex. I wish you the very best. I hope you subscribe. We'll see you soon. Thank you.